but okay, you got me? All right, thank you. So after hearing all this, I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm so traditional because I'm actually a nuclear engineer that works on reactors. So uh, I'm a little bit too traditional, I think, in, in the way I, I work. Uh, and I like nuclear reactors. I like them in many different ways. Um, and I work with them from both uh, looking at the fun fundamental phenomenon of radiation and uh, interactions that happen in a nuclear reactor uh, and also the applied nature of the interaction process itself. Uh, one disclaimer is uh, that I need to make over here is that none of the pictures and images and plots and graphs were made by me uh, in this uh, presentation. And uh, students and researchers in my group that are sitting here will recognize stuff that they did, right? So just don't consider me that I plagiarized your you know, I plagiarized your presentations. Pulsar reactor is uh, the first reactor and uh, the main reactor I'm working with on a daily basis. This is our uh, Bay Area. And if you haven't visited, this is something that you might want to do. Take a tour and look at everything that we do. We have a very busy uh, activity level in this reactor with all of the facilities that we have developed and all of the nature of activities that we have. Just to give you an idea uh, in a schematic fashion, uh, we really viewed this reactor as a major radiation source and we're using the radiation emanating from the core of this reactor uh, to uh, design uh, and set up uh, radiation probing facilities, including scattering instruments, uh, using neutrons, uh, imaging instruments. Uh, we're using it also to generate uh, positrons and using them as radiation probes. We have fundamental experiments uh, going on with neutron physics and uh, the use of ultra-cold neutrons. We have uh, nuclear energy-oriented experiments where we are testing uh, and, and building and uh, soon to be uh, operating a fuel testing loop uh, here in the reactor as you see and this is gonna, uh, going to be one of our uh, main and newest uh, facilities going online in the very near future. Uh, but in addition to doing all this and uh, all of the work that we do that, <clears throat> I thought of the theme that uh, our group is, uh, is really moving into and we really uh, move in a theme uh, that you could consider as a general umbrella for it the title of advanced reactors. Because everything that we do in terms of the fuel research, uh, in terms of the fundamental physics uh, analysis that we do, uh, in terms of the development of instrumentation and detection techniques, all really uh, falls whether programmatically from a funding point of view or even scientifically and engineering wise under the advanced reactor umbrella. And this is the loop uh, and I put it here on purpose. This is the loop that we are designing. And some people may recognize these figures. Uh, I think, is it you, Cole, yeah. that made this? OK. So I'm guessing right, because I was wondering where these figures came from. And, and uh, this is a schematic of the loop that we're building. And we're actually testing instant insertion, you can see here. We're also looking at fundamentally what this loop is going to generate for us. It's going to generate information about the release of fission gases from uh, advanced nuclear fuels. And we're trying to understand how this release happens on an atomistic scale. So we're resorting to atomistic simulation techniques uh, to not actually model the atoms, but we're actually modeling the vacancies, uh, almost like uh, modeling the inverse of matter, the lack of matter, and trying to track how these vacancies move around because they are actually the main mechanism by which fission gases move uh, in nuclear fuel. Another project related to this is a, uh, we are also helping restart the treat reactor at Idaho National Lab and the testing of nuclear fuel, and Colby Sorrell here is working on that heavily, and I think these are pictures from you, right? And uh, what you could see here, this is TREAT. TREAT is a pulsed reactor uh, that has just uh, gotten restarted after about 25 years of hiatus. Uh, we are actually modeling uh, the uh, transient uh, operating phenomena. And I show here a transient that uh, with experimental uh, and computational uh, predictions of the transient and the evo evolution of uh, energy distribution and temperature distribution in the core. And we're hoping to be able to contribute 
our transient uh, simulations coupled to the experimental data to the International Reactor Physics Handbook, which, is, uh, which uh, puts together all of the international effort in benchmarking uh, in a place that uh, users can resort to. Again, to support uh, understanding fuel phenomena, we're developing very advanced instrumentation. By the way, this is a gamma spectrum. Uh, and just because there were questions about it. Uh, we're, at, we're developing very advanced gamma spectrometry uh, instrumentation. Why is it advanced? Because traditionally right now when you go and you buy off-the-shelf gamma spectroscopy or spectrometry instrumentation, uh, it's almost a one-size-fits-all. So you set it up uh, and you leave it and it does the detection for you. Here, our gamma spectrometry instruments actually look at the radiation environment and decide how they want to operate in that radiation environment. If the radiation environment is very hot and intense, the spectrometer will start adjusting itself to match that radiation uh, environment and to collect the information in the most optimum fashion that results in the best resolution, that results in the best throughput and count rate without, with the least loss of information. Uh, we're using FPGA technology to do that. We, uh, some folks I think might be here who are dabbling with FPGA. Yeah, you guys are dabbling with FPGAs. Uh, Shafali Saxon has been working on this for a few years now and she's near graduation with her PhD <coughs> uh, on this. We're also working on the visualization process, so we do a lot of imaging, and we've just started uh, installing our dynamic imaging systems in the reactor. Again, one of our interests is to be able to image fuel structures and look at the damage in these fuel structures, and also do it uh, in a flow environment. So these dynamic cameras that we have been installing and using can capture uh, flow environment, uh, for example. And again, our uh, thinking is that this would be quite applica applicable to advanced reactors, like for example, what would this be? Pebble bed reactors. <coughs> Again, advanced reactors and neutron thermalization. Uh, this has been a staple of our operation and probably one of the uh, biggest bill payers over here, and there are too many bill payers, so, uh, but this has been really a uh, major piece of work uh, that we started many, many years ago in this group. And again, the motivation is to understand the operations of these reactors. You really need to understand the reaction rates inside the reactor, and the reaction rates depend on the neutron spectrum in the reactor. And if you don't know the neutron spectrum accurately, everything gets thrown off from basic operations to safety. And one of the largest sources of uncertainty were the cross sections, especially at low energies. This is really the workhorse equation. My students over here have seen this too much. You can close your eyes if you don't want to look at it anymore. And many of our group members right now are still working. We're a big contributor to the NDEF 8, so uh, if you use NDEF data libraries and cross sections, probably you are, even if you don't know it, if you're doing any kind of neutronics calculations. And these are all the libraries that we have contributed in the last two years. And uh, so we have 11 libraries. I think there were 15 contributed to NDF8. 11 came from us at NC State. And so we are probably the largest in the world. We developed uh, a new platform. We're aspiring to replace, who knows the Enjoy data code? Anybody used it? No, everybody knows it? We, th we think we can replace it. We have Flash. And uh, Flash is a new system that now certainly replaces everything in Enjoy that deals with thermal scattering. We think that we can take it a step further and uh, couple it to even higher energy treatments of the cross section. And if we do a little bit of work on that, we're starting to think that we can take out the whole Enjoy thing, but I'm not telling Los Alamos that yet because the, you know, I'm scared. I'm scared to say that. Uh, so we do a lot of uh, atomistic simulations that support this because really at the heart and soul, thermal scattering is sort of an uh, area between uh, materials and neutronics. It's a very special area, uh, an interface area. These are representative projects that we have. We collaborate a lot with national labs. Uh, and uh, of course, we're sponsored by government agencies like uh, the Department of Energy, Naval Reactors, NNSA, and so we have a lot of that going on. Uh, these are active projects. Uh, some of them are just brand new and starting, and we aspire to have more in the new, near future. This is the family tree. 
this is uh, the family for the past 20 years. So we have a lot of members in our family and the, the red ones are still at home. And one day they will leave home. I know it's sad, but that will happen. Uh, and uh, Uweju is the latest addition from, they move this way, by the way. So this is the youngest and they get older, older. <laughs> And then Yueju just went here, over here. And so it happens. Uh, but we're very proud of the family tree over here. And uh, representative publications. We publish in journals like uh, Annals of Nuclear Energy, Progress of Nuclear Energy, uh, IEEE Transactions on Nuclear Science, Nuclear Instruments and Methods, uh, conferences. We go to Pfizer, we go to NUMAT, Nuclear Materials Conferences. Uh, a lot of what we do overlaps many areas of research. And uh, we have been populating many of these conferences. OK, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Questions?